Now that we have some of the basic mechanics of Node under our belts, we're ready to start looking at the Node API, and we're going to start with the Event Emitter module. The Event Emitter that Node gives us is basically a publish and subscribe functionality. Let's start by getting that module. So I'll say var event emitter equals require events dot event emitter. Notice how what we pass to require here is not a relative path, and that's because the events module is part of the native API, and so we just pass the name of that module events. Notice also that our event emitter constructor is a property of the events module object. So now that we have this constructor function, we can go ahead and create a new event emitter. So I can say var ee equals new event emitter. And now we can listen for events. So we can say ee dot on some event, and then we can have a callback function that will be run when that event occurs. We can expect this function to take some data, and in here we can just do console.log, and I'll say uh, some event, and we'll console.log that data. Now we can emit the event with our event emitters emit method, and we pass the event name as the first parameter, and then if we want, we can pass data parameters, and this can be as many as we want, and it can really be any JavaScript value. For now, we will just do a simple options object. And if you're not familiar with using events in this way, look up using the publish and subscribe model in JavaScript. Basically, this allows us to have one portion of our code where we are listening for an event and another portion where we actually trigger the event. And there's no hard connection between these two portions. The beauty of it is that we can emit events. And if there's nobody listening for them, that's fine. They just will be emitted and no one has to do anything. But if one or multiple other parts of our code do want to perform some action when an event occurs, they can. And so it allows you to create different modules of your code that are loosely coupled, and therefore easy to add and remove. So let's see this in action. If I run our events.js file here, you can see that some event and options true is printed out because of our console.log line here inside of our callback function. Now there's another method called event emitter dot once and once is pretty similar. This will only be called once though. So if I console.log and say only once, let's duplicate our event emitter here and maybe we'll change options to false. Oh, of course, and I can't forget to put the event name there. So we'll just have that on the same event, some event. And now if I rerun this file, you can see that our first event listener happens twice. However, only once was only called once because after the first time, this event handler is canceled. We can actually cancel event handlers on our own if we want to do ee.remove listener. And of course, that would take some event and then the function as well. To do that, of course, we would need to have a function with a name instead of an anonymous function. So if I create a callback here, and we'll just log manual once, then we can say ee.on some event, and we will just call callback like this. But then what we can do is inside the callback, we do ee.remove listener to some event, and we pass callback again in there. So this way, when the event is emitted first, callback will be called, and it will remove itself from being a listener. So now if I run this again, you'll see that manual once only happens once because it manually removes itself. One of the neat patterns that you might see with event emitter is that you can actually use event emitter as an extension of your own constructor functions. Let me show you how this might work. First, I'm going to require the util module, which we're actually going to look at in more depth in the next lesson. And then what I want to do is create a user list constructor. This is going to have a list property, of course, an array. But then what we also want to do in here is say event emitter dot call, and we're going to pass it this. What this will do is remember event emitter is our constructor function, and we're going to call that function with our user list instance as a parameter of it. So this basically means our user list constructor will call the event emitter constructor as a kind of super constructor. Then what we also want to do is say util dot inherits, and we're going to say the user list inherits from event emitter. What this means basically is that the prototype object of the user list is that the user lists prototype object will have a prototype of its own, which will be the event emitter prototype object. Basically, we're making user list a subclass of event emitter. So now user list has these on and once and remove listener and emit methods that we just saw. Now let's give user list a prototype method of its own. And this will be add and we can take a username as the parameter. And what we'll do is we'll just say this dot list dot push and we'll push in the name and then we can say this dot emit and we will emit the new user event and we'll send that name along. So now I can create a new user list 
And then what I can do is say somewhere else in my code, perhaps, maybe in a view that we want to use to display the list of users, I can say list dot on new user. And then I can take that name, of course, as a parameter. And then here I can maybe use that list to somehow render a server side view, or maybe update some database on the server side or something like that. In this case, we'll just do something simple and just say console.log hello, and we will pass that name along. And now I can say list dot add and let's add a user Sean and list dot add and we'll add another user Gus. If I go back to the terminal and I will rerun that file, you can see we have hello Sean and hello Gus printed out to the terminal. And so this is a neat little pattern that you can use to create your own modules that inherit the event emitter module. So event emitter is a very, very basic module, but it gives you some very solid bootstrapping that you can use to create powerful modules of your own.